Is it possible that the energy we need every day to continue as a productive society could be free and available at all times? Is it possible that the ability to move energy freely in the ether was a reality in the past, and that physical wires were not needed to transmit electricity from point A to point B? According to researchers and old world reset theorists, this may have been the norm in a note to distant past. Let's take a look and highlight the term. Antiquitech refers to unknown technology we may see evidence of on structures and buildings of the past. Perhaps even to move energy throughout the realm. Could the use of magnets, sacred geometry or water that gathers etheric energy be the method used by a previous lost civilization? Combine this with highly advanced ancient technology which may have been lost with a previous generation unknown to us and we may find some answers in the buildings right in front of us. In these handfuls of ideas, we find that the definition of the concept has made it clear that the methods for the use of electricity or energy through an architectural medium, a building intelligently built for such purposes, is achieved using geometry, water or magnetism. Within the theory of the lost empire and old world reset, it is interesting to observe the way in which temples, buildings, and star forts comply with the characteristics of being built through a sacred geometric design and are located near abundant water sources. Is there a hidden technology we have lost as a society in the sands of time? How can we be certain these overbuilt, unnecessary details on history's architecture had no other purpose other than decoration? According to the theory of the great cultural reset of the 1800s, the Old World Empire, who were the inhabitants of a lost legendary worldwide civilization, were masters of masonry technology, unlimited free energy, and magnificent architecture. In fact, the Roman Acothic architectural style, which is still visible in town halls, banks, water stations, cathedrals, churches, hospitals, and other comparable public and urban buildings, possibly has more ancient origins. The old world inhabitants, being possessors of a very advanced ancestral knowledge, designed intelligent buildings that worked in conjunction with the vibrations of one's consciousness, mother nature, and possibly sound itself using sacred engineering and architecture and possessing the knowledge of metaphysical geometry and sacred mathematics. The Old World Empire designed complex buildings that efficiently channeled the energy of the earth or the ether that is in the air at all times. How they did this is not completely understood today, but the evidence of intelligent construction of these buildings could indicate that the ether was channeled and retransmitted within the structure, being absorbed by the people around it. Let's use the St. Walburgis Church in Zutphen, Netherlands as an example. Do these spires on the top of the cathedral look like they are only decorative? They almost resemble a type of electric coil, designed in a way to harness some sort of energy. Perhaps these are deliberately constructed and placed in these locations to harness a certain type of energy that we may no longer have the knowledge to create. There are countless other examples, and they can span in completely different locations around the globe. Deventer in the Netherlands. Cathedral of St. Mary in Spain. Cathedral of St. Michael in Belgium. The Strasbourg Cathedral is an example with completely mind-boggling architecture and antiquitech all over it. Something remarkable is that many of the ancient buildings that are associated with this supposed lost empire are located in, or very close to, ley lines, which are sections of the earth where the terrestrial energy circulates in a regular, direct and uninterrupted flow that can be intentionally harnessed. These structures built on ley lines can date back thousands of years. Just like we have our own energy centers or chakras, Mother Earth also has hers. When you start looking into the nature of this universe and the Earth, we start seeing how everything is a mirror. Within us is a universe, around us is a universe, and we are all connected. We are connected to Mother Earth through the subtle electrical current that runs around the entire planet. These electrical currents are known as ley lines and are almost like Mother Earth's veins. Just like we have veins that flow in and out of the heart, Mother Earth has ley lines, 
which are lines of energy that coil around the Earth in a similar fashion. In fact, where the ley lines intersect are believed to be high points of energy or high concentrations of electrical charge. These lines are also said to be able to take information or energy from these higher vibrational points and carry them around the world. These intersecting points along the ley lines are also coincidentally home to some of the most sacred temples and monuments in the world. When you look into ancient civilizations, it is clear that they seem to understand the energy and power of ley lines. Were the structures of the old world reset designed to harness the same energy? Currently, the effort and production cost of a building with such features would be exorbitant. In addition to the fact that even with the largest cranes and equipment, it is not guaranteed that such great architectural feats could be carried out, and much less that they possess the physical qualities and energetic qualities harnessed by the original buildings and monuments of the old world. Even the Taj Mahal in India dawns countless examples of possible antiquitec on its exterior. Was it used to tap into free energy in the ether? Perhaps the purpose of many of the great obelisks and enormous Gothic-style towers of the world were to function as antennas that canalized the energy below the ground and floating in the air, and then retransmitted it to the next tower or obelisk, in ways more or less similar to a Tesla tower. In old world cities, were lighthouse systems and homes illuminated in the same way? Did the cities not have any type of wiring for the transmission of energy? In addition, as it emanated directly from the earth, this energy is thought to have been completely clean, so it did not harm the environment and help nourish the people who were under the influence of the energy channeled by the structures within them. Why does our technology and knowledge of sacred engineering, geometry and architecture seem to have regressed? Why would it be impossible for us to build great monuments and buildings like those of past centuries? Why did we abandon the construction methods that possibly used free energy from the earth? It is hardly credible that, after thousands of years building monuments and cities under these premises, we have simply considered it of little use from one day to the next. Perhaps everything is not what it may seem, so that we no longer have access to technological buildings and structures that could help expand our consciousness and harness the free energy of the earth. Stay tuned for more next time. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications for new videos.